Hi everyone, good to, see, to be with you again for this last session. As you notice, you are not seeing me, but I hope you are hearing me just fine. And the reason being that I need to change the setting because I need to be in front of my computer so that I can show you guys uh, some presentation that I have for you. So this is this will be the format of this session. I have a presentation of various case studies, examples, um, suggestion, advices to show you uh, as you hear me going through those slides. A piece of advice for you attending, uh, be ready to take some notes. Pen and paper or on your smartphone, whichever, but you will get um, tips. You will have uh, links uh, suggestion, books, and many things that I will be speaking and for showing, so you would want to um, take some note. So without further ado, let's let's get dive in. I want to very quickly take some example of what we have preached to see if we walk the talk. For example, you see the importance of communicating and rightly communicating. If this very webinar that you are attending did not have a, a visual or had a bad visual, most likely most of you wouldn't attend, okay? So right, right on, we see the effectiveness and usefulness of communication and good communication, right? And during the sessions, have you noticed the usage that, of the slides that I use here and there? And, and, and quite honestly, to this question on your screen, you would agree that it would have been difficult, more difficult for you to just follow through uh, during all those sessions without those slides. Those slides were helpful. I hope so, you are agreeing with me, I'm seeing you, but for sure they are helpful. And I would add also that I didn't use them um, predominantly. By, by that I mean I only used them when I really needed them, right? So I always spoke about clarity and consistency and I hope for those who have maybe the design or artistic eye, uh, have you noticed if, uh, if those session visually or, or what you hear, what you heard, had clarity and consistency. Have you noticed that I use the same colors, the same color tones, same fonts, the same graphics, the same, I, I spoke from the same worldview, biblical worldview, right? So here, here's a case in case, um, in case you, you didn't notice that the very slides, the very sessions that we were going through were aligned to the teaching. Uh, it's very important in terms of clarity and consistency. Just a little test, maybe this one was not, I'm not sure most of you would notice, but congratulations for the one who will notice, have noticed it, is that the visual I use for the first session is a bit different from the visual I use for the other session. So for the first session, you have this one and you will notice the difference from the other three. Now, I think you notice the difference. You would say it's a tiny difference that the, this one, the one, uh, the first one is looking to the left and the others is, are looking to the right. So you must know that as visual communication means a lot, an image is, a, is like a thousand words, you say, we used to say, and it's very true. Actually, it means uh, it has meaning often that we don't think of, but it, it, uh, those meaning uh, so enters our sub subconscious. So, so image are very powerful. For example, why, why did I do that on the first uh, session? Quite honestly, because for the, for the meaning of someone looking to the left. Anytime you use a visual, a signage, a people standing and looking to the left, the, the, the meaning can easily be interpreted as looking to uh, the past. Okay, every time you, you look to the left, you lead to the left, it's like looking in the back, looking to the pulse, okay, looking out, looking back. Now, every time you, you point, you lead towards the right, it's the opposite. It's, it's looking forward, looking now and forward, looking in the future. And the first session was basically that. We were looking to the back, who we are. Who we are exactly? How do we understand media and arts? How and why should we care about media and arts? That's what we were doing, looking to the back. And then we move forward in session two to four, or moving forward. So that's just some things to maybe blow your mind uh, for some of you that didn't realize that the very session were uh, full, were, were containing the principles of the, the, the teachings of those sessions. Um, 
I also want to say that uh, it's a very important thing that I did for the last three session is to re-evaluate, to self-evaluate, self-critic uh, what I did. It's very important uh, to do self-evaluation. Uh, so that's what I did for myself. Uh, I have a good look on the video and lo and behold, I notice things that need to be improved. Uh, for example, by doing a self evaluation and self criticism, I noticed that the quality of the video, the camera need to be upgraded. This will lead to an action from my part, from the church where I am, where we will need to, we have ground to invest in a better camera, which will help us for future communication. Uh, you see how it is important for self criticism, self evaluation. I also noticed that I did improve for, for those who know, who know me, uh, I did improve in my uh, articulation, but I need to improve more. Uh, when I was criticizing myself, I see I, there's, there's still room for me to improve in terms of my articulation or my English. Uh, the goal for me is not to be like a native English speaking, because I'm not a native speaking person. And the goal is not also to be the next Morgan Freeman. No, is to keep being myself, but to get better at maybe articulating in English better so that uh, the listeners uh, will enjoy it more. So be your own critic. That's the first word of advice for you uh, today. Be your own critic. It's very good, yes, to have a team and to be ready. We need to be humble, to be ready to receive criticism from others. It's very good. But here I'm talking about this practice of the Christian mind to self-evaluate your work, to critic your, your own work, not to just destroy yourself, but to improve. It's okay to be satisfied and even to congratulate, congratulate one another for anything that we do well or we have improved, but yet we need to consecrate time Time enough for self-critic, to see what didn't work, okay? It's very important. Don't just wrap up after you've done a task, uh, dear media team members listening. Don't just wrap up and go after you finish. You either immediately or later review, review your work, speak about it if you are a team and recalibrate. And this is how you will uh, walk in line with this pursuit of excellence for the glory of of Christ. So that's it for our own example. Uh, let me sh start with our first um, case study. We will re review a, a card game, a Christian card game, very simple one um, that exists two years ago. Uh, it's called Bible Emoji. And the first case is very known to me because my family, my family and I was at, were at the center of this project. So if there are any parents here, any children, any youth listening, listen well. There are a lot to be uh, learned about the practice of dominion mandate in creativity. You see how it can grow, the benefit it, it is, the adventure it is, um, and even coming from, from a kid uh, and coming from a small family in a small island and what God can do with that. So let me introduce you to Bible imagery. That's a card game again, a Christian card game that we developed my family and I. And the, the story behind is something that you would want to, to, to glean how the Lord used uh, use that, how creativity is being used, how the Christian mind in media and art was uh, useful, and how uh, even from an early age, it was a big adventure for my, my son, for myself, my wife, and the whole family, actually. And it did give glory to God. It still is giving glory to God. Um, so we had, it was during the COVID lockdown period, uh, and after being very bored with playing the same games, my uh, elder son came in and said he, he had an idea to change a bit the rules of an existing game and recreate a new one. But he, he wanted uh, to add in our faith, elements of our, of our, our faith. And he told me, can we have fun while, uh, while uh, still playing uh, things that are relevant to our faith? And the answer I, I gave him is, of course. So he came in with the concept on a piece of paper, they tried it, they played it, we, uh, hearing that they were loving it and enjoying it, we came also and we played with them and we immediately saw that he, he, he's onto something. So we, we talked more about it, we said, hey, let's think it through, Either that's, that might be something here, that might be a game that we can develop. We were not thinking about selling all this. We can develop more for ourselves, actually. So thinking it through for some days, we start to see a great potential in the game. And we start to develop the ideas more and more. Uh, I started to spend 
blessed time with my son to speak about planning, about wisdom, about uh, the world, about the, 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 how we do something, like how you make something from an, an idea to reality. So it was a very blessed moment. So we prayed about it. We started with that praying, 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 and we plan about it. So yes, we do need to plan. I pray God asks us to plan. And we plan and we pray about those plan and we let him uh, direct our path. This led us to do a prototype of this game that we uh, that we did and we played and we tested with families and, and so forth. And we also take, took risk, brothers and sisters. Risk taking is from part of this dominion mandate that we have. We will need to take risk, but I'm talking about risk in things that we know the Lord is leading us into. I'm talking about risk done uh, with a plan. It's calculated risk. And also sometimes it's just risk by faith. We are are making a step of faith in that. So we did that. And we obviously didn't enter this uh, with a business mindset. We wanted quality of the game. We wanted quality time in family. We wanted it to be a tool for discipleship for parents and kids and kids' ministries. yeah, we wanted, we accepted also that the game had limitation. Uh, the aim was not to create the best game ever. And we were hum- humble enough to accept that the game is limited, and, but it should be a good game doing exactly what it promises to do. And that's what we did. So we had, in a, in a matter of a few months, we had from an idea, we had a final product, a, an order. We placed an order to from a printing provider to, to do this. Uh, card for us. We opted for the best quality. We wanted everything to be neat uh, and good. And from there on, we needed to communicate, right? You have the games and we needed to make the world know that there's this game that anyone can play. Those are emojis, emoji, uh, unique emojis that we design. Uh, each card is a unique emoji. And um, I will show you how, how it is. We, what you're seeing here is our website. On our website, we explain everything, babelemoji.co. Uh, people will see what is this this game. The, this, the gray card is a, 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 a help card. Is a, is a card that helps the player to see all the families. Uh, we have eight biblical characters, which we call family here. And each character it has five emoji that compose uh, this character, this family. The one who has the most collected the most families at the end of the game wins. So we created this game, uh, and you are on our, on our website here. On this video, you will see a bit more on how to play. We delivered some teaching about those biblical characters freely. We gave some coloring uh, books and games freely. Um, so we thought about the, the Christian uh, kids ministry for those who want to purchase in group. And, and again, give a lot of things freely. We devoted much of time to, to provide a free family devotional uh, based on the characters of this, uh, of this game, uh, where each story, where is it in the Bible, how does it relate to the gospel and Christ and salvation and all and so forth. So that's the game. That's a game that we, we created from this lovely little family uh, during COVID. Uh, so on this game, I provided uh, the information about it, and yeah, I hope you can go check it out. Uh, it's it's a it's something that is uh, like I said in many houses we, we receive many feedbacks in Christian markets when we uh, at the end of the years we have great great feedbacks from people of many uh, all ages actually, and this book is has been. Um, we had it. We had a reseller in the USA. Uh, we have still a, a reseller in France, in Europe. There's many people in Africa that have have one. So that's it. We aim for small. We didn't aim for big, uh, because that that was not the vision to be uh, this being a main activity for us or a great business for us. But it was an opportunity to glorify God. Firstly, in our own family. We were blessed to receive creativity, see develop as a family, to plan, to pray for the children, to witness risk taking with wisdom and to act with this dominion mandate that this is my father's world. He gave me creativity and Christian families and kids need to enjoy it. There are times that need to be invested in fun in Christian homes 
without shame. And many people have been playing this game also with their guests at home, those non-Christian unbelievers. So that's a great opportunity for sharing the gospel also. So that was the first case scenario. I would encourage any parents, anyone who are creative, don't limit yourself. Don't limit yourself. I'm not telling you like this message, follow your dream. That was not my dream, but the Lord can do mighty things. Parents, do make an effort to recognize the gifts that the Lord uh, has given you and has given your kids also. And church members also, there's a lot can be done. If a little family in Moshe's, this tiny dot in the middle of the ocean, has been able to do such a game, imagine what you can do in a bigger country in Africa. Many of you can, I'm not saying a game, it can be anything else, but just the mindset help us, the Christian mind help us a lot. And I bless the Lord for the testimony for the kids also and, and the church. And, and, and we were invited even on, on the radio for interview. We were invited on a national TV also to uh, to share. And it was a great uh, moment to testify of the Lord, of our, of our faith. Um, so, yeah, praise the Lord for that. Case study number two. I will give you an example of Simpler is Better. So now it's for those who are in the media uh, or graphic designer or video. Uh, I, I want you to to be, how we say that, um, content, reassured, yeah, that's a better word, reassured, that you don't need to do over complicated things. And I wanted you to see the, the page of one of um, the, the shepherd's house, which is a church plant uh, of uh, the pastor Kosti Hin. It was planted in 2022, and you will see how they did very well, but also with, with nothing uh, fancy, nothing complicated. So it was very simple yet effective. So if you look at this, for example, this is um, the, the YouTube page, YouTube page. So you will notice consistency and clarity. You will notice uh, you will immediately notice, okay, this is a, a preaching series, this is a, another preaching series, this is another preaching. You quickly identify uh, the teaching, the topics, the themes, right? Um, and this is done by simple media, very simple design. What you just saw is very, very simple, not complex, not complex at all. Um, so this is something that should uh, encourage anyone helping in the media team. You don't need to, to make it mediocre or too simple, but you can make it very good yet while being simple. No gimmicks, no unnecessary gimmicks. Keep it simple yet effective. Keep it clear, consistent, and it works. It works. Okay? So this is the logo. I'm not commenting on the logo here. Um, some of you might see this logo complex. Some might, uh, some won't. Um, I don't see this logo very fitting for an African country, but this is very, uh, uh, um, very fitting for American, I would say, uh, urban American. So let me give you another example of what they do from Shepherd's House. So for example, for those of you who do who does video, most of, of the time the worship service, the conference videos, um, even this conference, uh, this webinar video, they are long, right? So with the limited attention span, how to catch the attention and lead people to, to those video videos later, they do some shorts, YouTube shorts. And YouTube shorts shouldn't take much of your time either. So what they do, they do some frame, framing, like as you, as you see, I will just take some example. Um, for a top, uh, this is a theme, a preaching series that they are doing. You'll find the frame here. So you have the logo, a, a gradient here, and this is a title of the sermon, okay? And this is an automated uh, text overlay, okay? There are many services online that can provide this. There are some software that can provide this freely. You can do it manually, but it would be more work. But uh, for English, this is a plugin that can be found. Anyways, my, my, uh, the case idea here is to just show how simple it is to just select a, a nice portion of this sermon that you will select for one minute or two video. Um, and look at the layout. This is another series that the, the, one of the pastors of this church was, was doing. Same, he has a frame, 
a simple graphic behind that doesn't change, and the title here, and they will have a text overlay. So let me maybe play this. Men up. will deceive, but God cannot lie. Men's words will fail. God's words are faithful. Men's that words the, will fade. The, God's the, words the and his promises Lugia. endure forever. That, that brings Phillips commentates this. The, his words are like a molten, yeah, shiny but... river of silver, white hot in intensity. They're purified again and again and again. His word is beyond all possibility of taint or dross. Yeah, so, so basically, that's a, that's no a very short video that, that highlighted a, a, a main uh, portion of this message. And it ends with, uh, to watch the full sermon, click on the link. That leads to the full sermon. Same here. So we can understand why that Jude is calling now a group of blood-bought saints to contend for the true faith of the gospel. Same thing. The word contend means... Same thing. One key... Uh, part of this message been selected for a minute or two, so more than it's a minute, and a, 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 a light uh, audio background uh, that catch the attention of the listener, that keeps him here, and it's some simple text overlay, and that that's it. People, I, I would want to click on this to to watch the full sermon just by this. Here is another one. Are Christian living it on was mission? the first of the series. Truth that's helpful transform. if you take the label of missionary. Off of just all the weird people that leave the so American again, dream there's the title far away. Why don't you just take the label off you them? Just move the, the text only missionaries screen, and start the looking at the post-it note this in your bathroom. You are a missionary too. You are. You and I are missionaries in this world. Your mission field is out there every single day. Are you productive in that? That's it. Watch full sermon on duck 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 duck. That's it, guys. That that's it, and it should take us a few minutes. You should stop and pastors, you should look at it that most of the weekly work of communication in terms of sermons, short and all this, don't need to take hours of your uh, ch uh, media team, volunteers. Um, you have other things to do that God has given you to do. So you can do very good work. That doesn't cost you much of the time and effort, and it is effective. So we can understand why that Jude is... Another case then. Uh, this one is, would be an example of um, clarity and consistency. Again, for anyone working in media uh, and all, that would be useful. Most of you, maybe, maybe you don't know, maybe you know, Legal Near Ministries for years has been very consistent. The branding, you already know that this is a Legal Near uh, video. And you already see those series, series of preaching. Very simple again, very simple need. And that's a very good example when they have special events. If you go on the YouTube page, you will see when they have special events, they will go the extra mile to do the extraordinary. So sometimes you will have a short animated video. Sometimes you will have a, an artistic video of, of world-class quality. So they, aim for quality, but their most routine communication is very simple, clear, and consistent, just as their theology, okay? No unnecessary editing, except for special occasion, maybe. So. That's what we saw. Moving again for another case study rapidly. Um, this time we will see an example of uh, the dominant mandate mindset, this mandate uh, mentality in media. Um, I will show you a Christian media fulfilling the dominant mandate with excellence in view. This is Canon Plus. Canon Plus was, uh, before being a media company, it, it was a, a printing company. They had many books. Then they decided to conquer more and more the media uh, till they had enough and they are still creating new podcasts, documentaries, uh, videos, movies, animated movies, and so forth. Um, I'm, not, I'm not saying that you need to agree with their theology, uh, but this is top quality media. Um, media company, would I would say, or ministry. So there, of course, it is... Um, American base, but we African can do that, should do that. The technology is here, the gifts are here. We can do that. Those are very, very good uh, series, very highly done, 
the, what they did do for the kids, for the men. Um, the, the documentaries are excellent, excellent documentaries, uh, completely in line with this um, Christian mind in media and arts. It's dominant men, they, they, they excel at, at it. It's really, really good to see. So, for example, if you have parents who are looking for documentaries, I would recommend you, uh, they, they have one called uh, The Riot and the Dance, The Riot and the Dance. And that will be a documentary that you never saw before because it is the same quality as National Geographic documentaries about nature, but with a Christian mind. And it's it, it, it extol God it's to another level. I, I, I was lit literally in awe and in tears when I was watching that. So that's an example of many others who started to do the media. Okay, not depend on Disney, not depend on the secular secular media. We started to see that we know how to write. We have good books. We have good books in the past. We can create good books now. We have the media skills. We can create interview, podcasts, documentaries, movies, animated movies, and they just get at it. And they are growing and growing and doing more. And they are not alone. They are not, they, are, they are not alone. They are not the first doing that. So I would advise you to. Um, to to check on check on them, not only them, but um, there are others also um, that are trying to do that. And my point with you, brothers and sisters, is that we are not to copy the Americans, but what they have, uh, we can do it with whatever the Lord gives us, with our context, with our culture, with our continent, our country, with the gifts He gives us according to the means he gives, of course, but slowly but surely we can start to exercise this dominion mandate in terms, in terms of media and art. So don't stop at just being a um, spectator uh, that just watch others doing this. We are to be active in it. So another case study, if you wish, is uh, an example of Christian creativity, excellence in Christian creativity. So most of the youth and even adults nowadays spend hours and hours in video games right and most of the video games are not good for the christian mind to be honest so that's a message for another time but the the christian creativity um uh, works in terms of video game can we as christian create real world-class quality video game when i say christian creating Video game. I'm not. I'm not saying that it is only for Christian, but even non-believer will look at it and say, "Wow." Okay. This case study about Gate Zero, which is a new video game that's still uh, being developed, actually uh, partly available, but it's about Christian creativity. It's about world-class game that's not boring because it's Christian. Many articles exist to say that Christian arts or Christian media are boring because we haven't done it to the excellency that even the secular are doing. But this video game is an example that people looking at this video game cannot say, oh, this is Christian, it, it must be boring. They will look at it and go, what? It's excellent, I want to, 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 to play it. And, and you're telling me but this is Christian? Yes, wow. This is, this is what they need to see from us. So let me just show you that what is this game. This game, they have done it not only of the world class quality, but, but they also made it very interactive. So they added another level of creativity in such a way that it, it, it is ideally uh, to be played um, by different people, not all doing the same thing behind the screen. Several action will be needed from several people people playing together. Some will be on their phone, some will be on this game, and they have some um, mysteries, some, some things, some questions, some quizzes to solve. Uh, I would encourage you to just Google it, Gate Zero, and you will see how amazing these are, really amazing game these are. Um, so let's, let's continue uh, on, on, on the next. 
So for the next one, it's not a video game for, for, for this time. We will be looking at uh, an amazing book from Andrew Peterson. If this name is not familiar for you by now, Andrew Peterson is a, a songwriter, a worship leader he, he has many songs non-christian songs um, uh, and albums and in this creativity that god has given him he has um continued to develop it and he started to write and he's a great writer especially writes in terms of fiction and um yeah fantasy so he wrote a for example the one you're seeing on the screen is a, the wing feather saga uh, this is a series of book that is excellent excellent wonderful universe wonderful wo world that he created with imagination that any christian can read then you will if you are a christian you will notice some themes that you know that comes from a christian mind but anyone can read this really anyone will enjoy it it is very top quality uh, literature fantasy fiction literature and it is so good so good that people wanted to make it into a live animated series so no, and before, behold, it was uh, what happened. Everyone excited for the festival tomorrow? Dragon Day! Oh, I can't wait for the Saki Tack races. Whoa. Down there! Dragon Day may be a day when folks try to forget about Fangs, but it doesn't mean the Fangs forget about us. Well, that, that that was just a little um, trailer of that game. And just as I I need to say, to say because of my Christian conscience and my theological alignment, the only thing that I may regret about the animated movie is not the movie in itself, but the studios that uh, distribute the movie, Android Studios. For those who don't know, um, that's another shame to us who are Christian uh reform or biblical christians and your studios are actually uh, a studio of the moments the latter day uh, latter day saints um church uh and they are of another gospel another jesus which is not the jesus of the bible and and they may have the same language but that's very tricky because you have the worldwide popular tv series right now that maybe you're looking at um, the chosen and they are that comes from the angel studios so uh, i won't take time to critique them much i know they are mormons and they are preaching and showing another christ uh, another gospel but also that's a shame for the christian to sound maybe called christian where are you at in terms of quality production quality distribution quality services that biblically sound artists and media media production can rely on for worldwide distribution so yeah so let's move on another uh, wonderful thing coming up uh, of another example of christian or authors excelling in, in, in this uh, creativity is the upcoming uh, i think they, they are already two seasons in it's not worth the young day for. it's my it's job a wonderfully life. animated uh, movie on the life of david king david uh, at a young age it is done on the same quality of dreamworks studios of the best of the world actually disney or in terms of quality they were looking not because it's christian but it needs to be poor remember so they were looking for the highest quality in terms of music animation storytelling so it's it's magnificent uh, actually if you look at it on youtube if you look at the trailer you will be in all so these things the books you have we, we stand on, on on the shoulders of giants of, of, of creative christian c.s lewis chronicles of narnia or books like you would love uh, the lord of the rings by tolkien um you have pilgrim's progress pilgrim's Pro progress they just made it a few years ago in animated movie it is excellently done you have the green amber sirens green amber uh e-m-b-e-r green amber this is a, this is a book done by a Christian author, it is excellent also, it is very excellent. You are, I will also recommend you look at some drama, some skits, um, theater. You, you have some women that does it. I recently I watched some skits from a women conference that really relieve uh, in me the joy of uh, drama, the, the joy of and power of watching a skit, a drama. Um, so if you go on, on YouTube, for example, and you type in revive our hearts, it's a woman women conference called revive our hearts and during this conference between each session they have some women doing some 
uh, theater, some skits, some drama. This is excellently done. It's very powerful. I will also, if you have some artists among you, you have some youth that likes to do, to draw to draw comics. I would recommend you a an artist, a cartoon artist, who is not only excellent, like a reference, even in the non-Christian are are buying her stuff because she's very good at it. He made she made her art really uh, top level. Um, so one thing to note down is humming fluff, hummingfluff.com, uh, and on on her website she made her testimony into a comic, like a cartoon, uh, a, a comic. Uh, it's a comic re, 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 retelling of, his, of her conversion story. She was one an atheist. She became to be saved in the Lord. And this testimony, the cartoon she made is excellent. I shared it. I downloaded it. It's for free. I downloaded it and sent it to many of my creative guys or members of my family who doesn't know the Lord. That's powerful. It has the gospel in it. It's also a very approachable way of sharing what the Lord can do in someone. So uh, for, for, for those who, who think that creative artists uh, lack support, I would ask you to see the model of Porchlight, uh, porchlight.art. If you write in on the website, you, you can write Porchlight. Porchlight is P-O-R-C-H, light, L-I-G-H-T, dot art. And you will find a new model of mingling art, Christian art, music, visual art, paintings, and also with hospitality. Hospitality, which is a, a Christian thing. Christian, uh, hospitality, which is always a way of sharing the gospel. So their model is, is a very interesting one that we can do in Africa, or you can do in Rwanda. And, and just take a look at it. See for yourself if you can do that. So let me move ahead for the next example of God's power in using media. Okay. Do you remember I don't know if you, you, you were familiar to that, but m m even myself in Moshe's, when I was leaving Pentecostalism and entering reform theology, God used one of the message of Paul Washer. And, and I'm not alone. Many, many people was, was touched by this someone who took a, a video of a youth conference of, uh, and a message of Paul Washer and just uploaded it on, on, on YouTube with this title, shocking message. Your shocking message. So this became viral. Many people shared it. And it was 17 years ago. 17 years ago. And why am I using that as an example? Because if anyone look at this, you will see the poor quality of the video. Not the best. You will maybe notice also a, not the, the ideal quality of the audio, but clear enough to understand what the preacher is saying. And according to Paul Washer's testimony a few years ago, uh, when he, he did an interview recounting the story behind uh, this message, the shocking message, where he said that they received tens and tens of thousands of people's testimony that where their life has been touched by this message. So what I want us to note, that it was not the plan of Paul Washer. It was not the best digital marketing strategy that helped. It was not the best team, media team he had, the best graphic design. It was not because it follows the algorithm or the new trends of video production. It was just solid biblical teaching being accessible in a necessary way. And it was a complete submission and display of God doing his work, bringing the fruits, bringing the real success and if anyone know of you uh, anyone of you know a bit about paul washer you can learn about how we should do media ministry he prayed he's someone who prays and he prayed and he was faithful he was just doing what god enables him to do in prayer and faithfulness so this event shed a light on the power of media for the propagation of solid biblical teaching in what we know to be an ocean, it's in an ocean of false doctrine, in an ocean of shallow Christian content, there was a man, faithful, prayerful, fearful, that was shedding the part, solid biblical teaching, and the Lord did the rest. So what's important for us to move forward to the next slide, that this was not a one-off event. This uh, event 
um, make the, the, the missionary uh, society of Washington learn something, the power of media. So when you look now, a year or two years ago, hot crime missionary society started to invest and have a small uh, media department. And what was hidden to the world, or at least unknown to the Christian world, became evident. They, hot crime missionary, they started to share more about the various missionaries in various difficult countries. And the powerful testimonies were, were being uh, viewed and how gripping conviction were being displayed in these uh, videos, which by the way, they, they don't make it they are not making, forcing the emotion out of people. They were just showing the reality of the power of the gospel in, in a dying world. So unknown people, Christian brothers, would not have been known. Their life given for the advancement of true gospel of Christ in the region would not have been known. Our participation and support in prayer, in volunteers, in workers, in finance wouldn't have been known if hard crime missionary didn't start one year or two years ago to invest in uh, media. So on their YouTube page, on their social media, um, you will see only when it is necessary, you will see videos from them. They are very well made. Uh, let, let's just scrolling through the YouTube. You will see various uh, interviews, you will see some documentaries, you will see some missionary in a specific area, you will see some updates uh, from the fields, uh, some message from Paul Washer himself, um, and so forth. You will have some shorts also. And this has really, really helped this ministry. Not that they were doing it to receive money, but there's a power, there were an untapped power, untapped power of media that they were not using a few years ago, but now that they are using more and more people, even me from Mauritius, I can pray for the brothers in Bolivia, in Rwanda, in, in Zambia, in, in, in any part of, of the world that I came to know uh, thanks to their platform. So there's a great power in that. So let's move on again. To see the power of having a good image, a good image in the Christian ministry. Very important to have the right image, remember. Uh, and I will take example of an existing uh, ministry in Madagascar called uh, 3M, Madagascar 3M. Uh, let me begin with that. And recently they have been donated a small building. So how would you envision a new seminary for pastors in Madagascar that starts with a uh, a new donated small building that aims to provide solid biblical training for the local pastors who cannot afford it in Madagascar. So that was a question when the brother in charge of it contacted me. And without faking it, we can say for sure that image is very important. The image you portray, how you are perceived, is very important. Uh, just like someone who goes to a job interview will be well dressed. And being well-dressed brings confidence to that same person. A good branding, a good image, if you wish, a good branding, firstly, helps yourself. A good branding helps your church, helps your ministry. And then the audience also will be helped in, 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 in trust and confidence uh, when he understands your identity. This is who we are. A branding says, this is who we are. We are. Um, and this is the quality. This is the standard. And we, we will live up to that. So let me introduce to you uh, how I develop this simple logo for a seminary uh, that are starting up in Madagascar. And as you notice, uh, we're talking about clarity and consistency. So uh, on your left, you have the main ministry logo and the seminary should not be completely uh, separated from this ministry. So I used the elements of the existing logo and created the seminary. While the both ha are unique, you can already see visually that they are linked, right? And that is very important. And, and, and so you have the members of the faculty, you have the documents that have this logo and this brings them confidence. This is a standard that they are, this is the quality that they will be serving. So that, that's, that, that was the aim. And 
for them to, to be able to do, do that, they have another ministry called Terrismos. Terrismos, I did the branding also, uh, which which is to have any pastors uh, who had to work, actually, uh, to have to work. So Terrismos have those pastors. Most of them are farmers um, and, and, and uh, what, I don't know what uh, other jobs they are doing, but through Terrismos, they create like a cooperative, a trade cooperative that enables uh, pastors to be having a network and be able to support themselves. Uh, they also created uh, a Christian heritage tour. So it is like a tourist tour of Madagascar. There's a trip for many days uh, that you can look up for that Christian heritage tour. And they do that for various days. I did the branding also. And why is it here in, the, in this presentation? Because the thinking is good. This heritage tour is done for the tourists. They visit the country, but also the heritage is in terms of the faith. They visit churches, they visit the first missionaries um, where they established the, the church in Madagascar. So it, it is also a blending of tourism and church ministry. You would visit the Christian faith uh, community in, in, in Madagascar. And the money, the profit from this tour will support the pastors that we want to study in the seminary. That's a very good way to think as a Christian, right? So speaking about um, effectiveness with the right branding, we need a, they needed a right website. Um, so this is the website I did for them. Uh, looks very professional, that sets the standard. We are not fooling people, this is really the standard. This brings, again, very good up, um, be, um, sense of belonging uh, and confidence to the team, but also, uh, sets the standard and, and bring trust and confidence to the viewer. Uh, as it is in Mana Mana Madagascar, the website has been done in their local language also. So we always need to think about our context. So this one is uh, in Malagasy also. So another example of the need of a good logo and website is um, uh, I often help, reform agency often help church planters. One uh, of the challenges of church planting in a new area is people don't know you, don't know your church. So branding is a visual identity and people look for things online. So you need a good branding and a presence online, uh, which is more impactful to reach a region where you are into. So we had a Buddhist brother and he, he couldn't believe his, uh, what he wrote, read about me uh, that we were offering branding and website for church planters like him, Biblical Lisan church, church Plant. So we did the branding, we did the website, simple, a nice website, as you may see, um, which has all the basic uh, information about the church, the pastor, the theology and the ministry, um, the partners and where, how to visit. And an interesting, uh, I would say rather, not immediate, but quite false uh, result from this branding and website is that where they started in a small church, they started in a small initial building. Because of their branding, because of their presence online, they have received more people coming in such a way that recently they need to move, they had to move to a bigger whole build, building in a university where more people come thanks to good communication. And they did it without spending on advertising. And one tip, one tip for you in regard of that is do take time to make sure your church 
is on Google Map listing, and that the listing is comprehensive. It's nicely done. It has some pictures, you have some logo, it has uh, some description, it has every details, contact details that you need. Why you should do that, even if you have a website or social media, is because Google Map, the reference, the search engine power for Google Map is very high, it's very powerful. If you're well listed uh, on Google Map, you might come first. Uh, in, in searches uh, in terms of your location, your regions. So this is a very powerful free search engine power. So that's a tip for you. I'll quickly move through that because we are already one away. Um, so these are all, all rebranding or branding for Christian churches or ministries that I did. Maybe you can pause later or, or take some photo or ask question later, but all these show quality. All, all these um, help the communication. Um, again, for the events, not just for our own webinar, all the events that we do need to be effective, need to show the right message uh, so that people may come they understand maybe uh, yeah they, they they are interested to come so most of what i'm showing you is for churches and ministry in africa but it's not limited to that and most of these uh before proper design proper communication the, the design were poor and then effective so um now it works so i'll quickly go through it there's some book cover Many book covers are done very poorly. The content is good, the cover is not. So we must try to, to aim for more. Um, and there's the other website I'm doing. So let me just, I'm mostly done, uh, follow up with some advices. Uh, one advice I will give any one of you, not just those uh, in media team, but parents, youth, young adults, anyone with a, uh, an online presence, anyone using the net. One advice I have for you is to unfollow. Practice, take time to unfollow and unsubscribe. It's, it's very easy to just ignore, you just scroll through. But what you're saying, if you don't unfollow, does not unsubscribing, if what you will be saying by your inaction is, okay, continue to feed me with those bad sources, those, those unnecessary um, sources. So practice the necessity act of adding some clicks go through some 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 clicks to just unfollow unsubscribe just say to this facebook say to this um uh, social media platform that i don't like this don't recommend this channel to me take it take this, the pain to to do that and even if you're shocked that the algorithm of, of your social media suggested you something very bad you can report, you can report, this is a very inappropriate stuff. Why are you showing that to me? So basically in a nutshell, I'm saying that you own your newsfeed. You own your newsfeed and here's a thing for you to note. Here's a tip. If you don't want to continuously go to various social media accounts uh, to search the net for the news, Okay, we all like some ministries, we like some, 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 some resources, but if you don't want to spend your time looking for this and all, all the time when you look for this, you will also see other things you can use for something called news aggregation, news aggregation uh, apps. These are, they are applications that aggregate news, uh, news aggregation, or some of them may be called news curation apps. One of them is called Feedly, for example, Feedly. Feedly is an app that uh, feeds you with the content with only the content that you choose. There will be no advertising, no unwarranted content, only the news that you choose from the sources that you trust. So for example, if you go on Feedly and you look for the channels, for the group, for the news, for the pages, you choose, for example, Ligonier or Founders Ministry or 
in Zambia you have um, biblical Christianity or even your church or Justin Peters ministry, whatever, you just click on add this as your feed and only every time they those those sources that you select, every time they release a content, you will receive it in Feedly. So basically what you're de doing is you design your own news feed, no longer, no longer invasive and irrelevant content, no longer wasting time uh, that will be preventing you doing other stuff. So that will be my first advice. Secondly is be inter intentional. Intentional of what? Be intentional in your online change. Um, there are media out there to keep you watching every day nonstop till, till you die. You can spend every hour of your life and your children spend every hour of their life and their children spend every hour of their life. There will be still material, media uh, that needs to, to, to that's, uh, that's left to be watched. So what I'm saying that we Christian, if we want to be mature and wise, it will help us to practice the fruit of the spirit, which is self-control. Be self-control in, in front of all the oceans of entertaining shiny things put before your eyes. Be intentional in your online search. And thirdly, I will, I would recommend to declutter, declutter your apps. It is wise to have a routine check, check very routine, routinely every month or every three months, uh, your usage of the apps on your, your phone or your computer. Check your app usage and you will immediately see what apps you are not using. Remove them if you are not using them. Keep only what you need or truly want uh, while knowing that you are the one that needs to exercise power over what you're keeping, right? And not the other way around, so declutter. Declutter the many things that we tend to install and we don't really need it. So, so declutter. And in the same vein, we can argue that another piece of advice can be to monitor your time usage of media devices. It takes time. And sometimes you, if you don't monitor, you don't really realize how much time is given into it. So if you monitor, it might be a shocking discovery for you for if you see what you consume for a week. So you can install apps that can help you do that. Uh, there, there are apps that can monitor your app usage, your internet usage, that can set restriction, that can give you reminders. For example, if you say, okay, every day I would want to spend not more than two hours on internet and you set it, this as a restriction and a reminder, it will remind you every time, it will give you every time. Uh, for my part, uh, my family and I, we, are, we use uh, an application that's called Stay Free. Stay Free. It's an app on, uh, you will have it on Apple or on Android, stay free app. Just download it, use it, set it. Uh, there's a paid version, there's a free version. The free version is fine for me. So you can use that to monitor your time usage and determine, uh, determine in your heart uh, how you will use your phone. And finally, uh, another advice is only use what you really need or what you really want. For example, if you need or want a car, you do not need three cars of three different brands, right? <laughs> so choose one in terms of social media or apps. Choose just one that will do the job for you. You don't need three apps that will basically do the basically the same thing. So choose one. Don't, you don't need all of the social media platforms, for example. Don't just sign up uh, and use any platform. Uh, and if you want to sign up to use the platform, please do your due, due diligence uh, to learn about the platform before you commit. Properly learn about what is the platform and be wise. The best way to, to learn about the platform is not on their promotional video. That's advertising. On their promotional video, all it will look nice. No better. Do better. Read about the pros and cons of users, the feedbacks, the reviews um, of those platforms before you make an informed decision. Uh, so a special note for art creators. Um, you need to know which platform best works for you to showcase your art in case you are selling your art or displaying your art online. Um, focus on the right ones rather than spreading all over various platforms. It will help you um, to save in time and money. 
So basically, all these advice uh, advice uh, advices is to redeeming time, and redeeming time should be something we aim for, right? Not only pray for, but actively working at it, consciously working to redeem time. That would be a fruitful goal, uh, I would argue. So let's move on. I will give. Uh, I will try to go rapidly to before ending this session with some advices, uh, some recommendation of, of resources. And before giving them, I would uh, like to remind the posters and lead, leaders listening, the posters and leaders. Uh, I would want you to remind it, to be reminded of um, a a plea that I had in the previous session. Please, before pressuring anyone in your media team. Uh, to be on board with the newest trends, to be on board with the newest technology or apps. Please educate yourself a bit uh, about this thing. Today you have seen that we ought not to do all things as the world does, right? So resist the temptation we can have to accommodate. Sometimes we need to adapt. Contextually in your church, you will you know better than me. Sometimes you, we will need to adapt. Yes, there's room to, for adaptation, but do not accommodate. Just as, for example, this mentality comes in your pulpit, in your farewell, the apostles, for example, in terms of sermon du duration, for how long should a sermon last? And in the modern age, with the consumer mind, uh, having an impact on attention, uh, retention, uh, so this, their consumer mind has been dictating how long a sermon would be. So what you do? Will you keep preaching a more simpler, narrower, shorter bits? because of attention span or would you just follow uh, like the dead fish be part of the program because the attention span will keep decreasing 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 or would you have the same mentality the same mindset that is in christ that if you need to go anti-cultural we will do and we just do right the same the right thing so there will be times that you will need to make peace with yourself that we are not called to accommodate. So yes, there will be a lot of text, a lot of platforms, a lot of trends. We don't need to accommodate all these things. We only need to adapt our communication in anything that needs to be uh, better. So some um, some practical um, resources, some recommendations before we end. Um, I would like you, if you want to dig deeper, uh, or you like what you heard, throughout this, uh, pr the previous session and you want to, to dig more, to dig deeper in this, I would recommend you read Tim Charlie's book, Do Better. Uh, and actually it is a good book for, to read for anyone, any Christian, any working adult, uh, and even a young student, uh, Do More Better. It's a practical guide to productivity. It is very good, it's very practical, it's theological, it's, um, it's for the rights to watch it of gift and time to the glory of God. Okay, do more better. Uh, another book that I recommend is Regan Soros, uh, Redeeming Productivity. Uh, he also has an online ministry, but by the way, he just quit his social media recently, like many, many podcasters and influencers are doing. There's, I'm following a trend for many months, months now that where I found many influencers and even podcasters and even Christian influencers are quitting their social media. And the reason, main reason being, uh, their re realization of the the toll um, this have on them in terms of time consumption uh, of social life of spirituality and and their bad effect it have on their focus. So, but the book here of redeeming productivity will be very useful. Tony Rinkis um, had a few books about this topic. The newest one is Competing Spectacles: uh, Treasure Treasuring Christ in the Media Age. And you have on this slide the three other books from the same author that is very well aligned. Um, again, I'm not condoning every every bit of word of everyone. We always need to, as a Christian, to practice discernment. But that's, these are very recommended reading. In terms of our re-education, I hope for many of us, you realize that as a Christian, you need to re-educate re yourself about art, about beauty. Do you love art? Do you know and understand art? So here are some books uh, or resources to rediscover this awe uh, and beauty uh, with a Christian um, perspective. First one is, the, like you see, the 75 masterpieces every Christian should know. Um, I recommend also Created and Creating, which is very good also, and, and Rembrandt in, in 
in the win, learning to love art through the eyes of faith is uh, by Ramsey is very good also. Um, art as a spiritual perception, very uh, recommended reading. And for those who love to write, which is an art, uh, poetry, poem, spoken words, uh, who love words, I just recommend this book, Poetic Words, uh, that you will enjoy. I enjoy it. I'm a word lover, so I enjoy this one. And Discovering God Through the Arts um, is another book recommendation for those who want to um, to dive in. So uh, for I also recommend someone, maybe Google or YouTube, try to find the interview that Ossie Spall did when he relate about his uh, thesis that he did uh, when he was in seminary. He did a thesis on Moby Dick, the, the story Moby Dick. And that will be interesting for us to, to read it because what he discovered with the, you will see that how the Christian mind will discover the meaning of such a, a, a wonderful uh, tale of Moby Dick. And it has such maybe hidden message for us or it was here, but we couldn't see that he uh, unpacked the the profound meanings of this uh, tale. Osis Paul did that, and so much so that it, it it was his thesis in seminary, but also in his office. Before he died in his office, he, he has this great masterpiece, a great oil painting of Moby Dick. Uh, so there's a, a way that art really impacts the Christian. It is meaningful to us at another level that the secular world, the secular mind doesn't have. So let me just close it here. There's a lot, lot of things that we could have seen. Uh, I apologize if I took a bit longer on the session, but like I said, it could have been longer. But I, want, I just want to thank you for your attention. I want to uh, you to know that we will, myself and the, my church will keep praying for you. If you got any questions for me, uh, do share it with your pastor. They will uh, pass it down to me. Uh, and. Uh, I love you guys. Hope, hopefully one day, Lord willing, I'll be physically uh, there with you. Uh, and I'll, I hope that whatever is true, whatever is pure, whatever is right in all that we, we, we heard and saw this today will, uh, will, be, will bring glory to God in our obedience to it. So, Christian, let's reign on media and arts for the glory of God. That's all for me. Thank you.